I am so excited to be interviewing the two people that we have today. For Happy Halloween, there is a parody of The Exorcist, and we have its star and one of its guest stars, Lindsay Pierce and Jordan Danica. Um, Lindsay, welcome. Um, can you tell me how you got involved in this show? Um, I am really good friends with Michael Shaw Fisher, who wrote the show, and Ali Miller, his wife, who is a producer, and Emma Hunton, who is the lead, is my best friend and also a producer. And when they said that they were bringing this here, they were like, there's this Broadway diva thing, like a cameo, would you wanna do it? And I was like, yeah. And I hadn't, I, I haven't performed with Emma in maybe like five, five, six years, something like that, something horrible, some horrible lead to big number. So I'm, I'm really excited. Yeah. Now tell us your background because it is definitely impressive. That's, that's a word. Thank you. That's very generous. Um, I, <laughs> I'm from California. I, I knew all of these people from living in LA for 11 years and, um, the best human beings ever. Um, it's really exciting to see these people bring a show from LA to New York. It's a huge accomplishment and they deserve to be applauded. Um, I just did theater and TV in New York, uh, in, in LA, and then uh, moved to New York for my Broadway debut. And, um, after that show, I did a tour and then now I'm here doing an off-Broadway show. And uh, let's I'm really talk grateful. about what those shows are. You're talking uh, Wicked. <laughs> yeah, I did Wicked. I, my Broadway debut was Wicked in 2020 and then we shut down and then we reopened uh, a little over two years ago. And then after Wicked, I jumped into the Mean Girls national tour. And then after that, uh, I jumped into Titanic as a Darawa. It's fun. My my goal is to just be here, be on the East Coast. <laughs> so that's that's well, all. Well, you're I'm, definitely all having an interesting ride on what kind of shows you're doing and yeah. the things that are being opened up. Yeah, yeah. It's a it's a ride is a great. You're giving me good words. Ride is perfect. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so our next guest. I fell in love with his voice when I saw him in the New York Pops. I was blown away. He sounded like Gordon McRae, uh, Richard Kiley, and I was just blown. And then I saw him do Lancelot in Camelot. We're talking Jordan Datica. Jordan, how are you? What have you been doing since Lancelot? Well, um, I've been recovering. I, I had an, I sustained a couple injuries doing that show, um, but I'm doing pretty well now. Um, I produced an album for a friend of mine, and so he's actually out on tour promoting that album right now. He'll actually be in New York uh, tomorrow, I believe. Uh, he's playing at the Rockwood table and stage, Derek Self. Shameless plug. Um, hey, shameless plug is good. Yeah, yeah. Um, other than that, yeah, I'm just working on a couple other shows. I've been teaching and I'm workshopping some things. And then this opp the opportunity to do this musical came up and I have the time. So I am thrilled to be like a small part of something that's going to be just so fun. Now you're both playing guest stars in this. Are you playing the same role? I think, I think so. so. Yeah. Yeah. So there's, I think, um, I mean, you can take it away, Jordan, because I could listen to that voice. I'll speak all day long. It's nuts. Right. <laughs> dulcet tones, dulcet <laughs> tones. Um, uh, there is a role that changes pretty much every night. Um, not the role itself, but the person playing it. It's called the Broadway diva. And this person like essentially takes the lead actress, Emma's character, like takes over her role for her. And the idea oh. is that they are redoing The Exorcist as a musical. And when that happens, like the demon from the film actually possesses the actress. And so when this Broadway diva comes in, it's apparently all hell quite literally breaks loose. And it, this person just kind of comes in to replace the lead actor for a moment. And then you'll see what happens. <laughs> Oh, I can't but wait. But it's different every, it's different. It, 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 it's not, it's not attached to gender or type or any, anything like that. It's just a different superstar. Cool. I mean, the, the, the list of people that are going to do it is so amazing. And it's, so it, are you it's only really... playing it one night? 
I'm just doing one. Yeah. Cause I'm, it's, I'm doing it on a Monday cause I'm in an eight show week schedule right now. So I can't, I can't do any other ones. Oh, so yeah. you're staying with Titanic. Oh yeah. Yeah. We just, we, they just actually announced today that we're extending until June 17th, I believe. So I'm, I'm there, Congratulations. Um, but they said, thank you. I'm so proud of that show. Um, but they said, you know, we have this, it's like the press night or something like that. Would you, would you want to do the first night? And I was like, is it on a Monday? Cause I can do it on one Monday. <laughs> and then, yeah, so it just worked out. Um, but I hope to see it. Um, my son, it, my son is coming into town and he's coming into town in January and Titanic is the one show he wants to see. <laughs> it's a good one. And I didn't get to see, Jordan, I didn't get to see your show, but it looked so beautiful. Thank it you. was just, it had to be the most amazing experience. It was a good time. Learned a lot, experienced a lot, and um, mm -hmm. it was a really good time. Yeah. Now you're playing a lot of classical roles in theater these Out days. There. Yes, yeah. My Fair Lady, mm -hmm. now this. Mm -hmm. What do you want to play next? Well, that's part of the reason why I'm doing this because it's such a, a stark departure. I tried to do something drastically different from every other role that I played. So, you know, before before doing Lancelot, I spent the last three years doing a television show, so and not really singing. So, and that was during COVID. So, I was very blessed for that. But that what was what did you do on TV? Uh, it's called Charmed. It was on the CW. You can watch it on. Oh, yeah. That. All, all season streaming I was in seasons two through four but um you know and that character was drastically different uh than the Lancelot um that I played and 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 you know the Rowles of the world and the Freddie Einsford Hills of the world but then you know I've also done Hamilton as well which is also drastically different um lots and, of period pieces yeah I've He's actually really amazing the yeah. Doing the television show is the only time I've ever played in my life a character that's uh, set in modern day. Set in modern day, and also yeah. it was the first time I played someone that was my actual age, which was which was really cool. But um, yeah. a different type of challenge. But this will be a, another type of. I don't even view this as a challenge. It's just a fun opportunity to show another side of what we all, as actors, I think, consider ourselves to be, which is boundless and just to have fun and to play. And I know one of, I got involved with this through one of the producers, similar to Lindsay, who's a friend of mine whose shows I've seen produced out in LA for years uh, at places like uh, Rock, Rockwell. Rockwell. And, yeah, 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 yeah. And I always yeah. wanted to be a part of something like that. So the fact that they're bringing that vibe and that energy to New York City and that they asked me. Is it Mia? Hmm? I know Mia? Chad. I know Chad. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Chad. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Chad, Chad Chad is like the costumer producer direct like he's amazing and, Sir, Emma, and Chad met. Yeah, truly yeah. I mean he's 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 so and I think that's something that I'm excited about like you said Jordan it's it's a such a celebration of the vastness of what all of these people when they come together what they can I mean this show is all original music original book like it is completely ne has never been seen or done before the only jumping off point is the film, The Exorcist. And then to bring in the Broadway community from New York coming, it just seems like such a celebration. And it, I, that's why I'm like, I really wanna, I don't know if I can do it more than once, but I wanna see it <laughs> mm -hmm. because I wanna see everybody like getting uplifted in that way. And I think that's, I think that's what theater is about and what it needs the most right now. Now I have to ask you both my favorite question. Lindsay, you can go first. They say that eyes are the windows to the soul, but I think songs are. What song or cycle of songs says who Lindsay is? Oh, um, song or cycle of songs, God. Um, I would have to say, hmm. That's difficult. Make Jordan One go minute. first. <laughs> it's, tough. it's tough. Okay, Jordan. <laughs> yeah, it's tough. I'm. Th oh wait, um, I was gonna say like the complete like um, discography of like Nina Simone. Oh, okay. There's something about her and her song style and the way that she sings and how she 
sings songs and the way the way in which she used her art completely to tell what she was not only feeling but what was happening in the world around her and to society at large I just really I don't I don't say that it like that represents who I am but I connect with it so deeply and there's something about her voice I have a ton of her vinyls whenever you put it on and you hear the crackle it's like time traveling she's just it's she's got this spooky I see right through you thing that I just can't get enough of and I think it would have to be Nina Simone it's really interesting that you say that because one of Magda's and I's close friends is Pat mm -hmm. Addis, the producer, and she's oh, producing the Nina Simone musical. <laughs> yeah, God, she's just, she's a legend for many a good reason. So that, that's my answer. Okay, Jordan, your turn. So good. That speaks to me a lot because a lot of songs that Nina Simone sang were, I was trained in art songs mm -hmm. and um, the stylings of John Jacob Niles. And, um, and a lot of Nina Simone, what Nina Simone sang were those songs. Yeah. So that's a great Perfectly answer. Perfectly crafted. Yeah, truly, truly. Um, I would say now, we had to do this in college where, sorry, we had to do this, I'll wait for the cops to pass. <laughs> <laughs> Living in the city. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, we had to wait, uh, we had to do this in college, my freshman year we had to like come in and bring a, either a song or a monologue that we thought described us. So since you're giving us a collection of songs, I'll, I'll go with um, Gil Scott Heron and Micaiah McRaven. Gil Scott Heron in general is Ooh, yeah. everything that he does is, is one of my favorites, but there's an album that was remade by uh, a jazz drummer named Micaiah McRaven. Uh, I want to make sure I get it right because this particular album has been made over by several different artists. It's called We're New Again, a reimagining by uh, Micaiah McRaven. But um, mm. it's really great. If you if you are into poetry and, and blues and and jazz, it's, it's a fantastic album. But particularly, um, there's a four-part poem on there called uh, Broken. And... Mm. Um, I think it's a really amazing poem and it's something that I haven't been raised by a whole bunch of women and um, <laughs> I very much relate to because it's about the ideas of, of the idea of a broken home and the idea of a broken family. What does that actually mean versus societally, you know, the stigmas that can come along with that. I but, asked the question, which should constantly change, first of all. Of course. Um, but I asked the question because I want my listeners to know the people that I'm interviewing. And I think it tells a great deal about who you are as people and as artists. So it's it's actually my favorite question to ask. It's a good one. Mm. It's a really good one. Yeah. And again, it should change like every second of every day. We're never the yeah. same people every second. Mm -hmm. um, Lindsay, when are you performing in The Exorcist? Um, I believe the show that I'm in is the uh, October 9th. Okay. So and Jordan, awesome. when are yours? Or uh, one? Yeah. I'm, I'm doing one on October 21st. Well, I am so grateful that you both talked to me today. Um, amazing, because this isn't who I thought I was getting, and I'm like so thrilled. <laughs> <laughs> no, sometimes life. things yeah. work out for the best. Yeah. Um, but I'm looking forward to this and I'm so glad I said yes to this interview now. Yeah, <laughs> it's a pleasure. Thank you for having us. Yeah, oh my God, thank you. And have a fabulous Halloween and have a fabulous show.